yeah, there's no rewind, and, and there's so much you need to learn that you, you can't learn except for in three. You know, and something has to be, something good has to be born from that. Something has to derive, something that, that's truly going to be great has to be derived from something great. see it in his eyes, and he didn't want to fight, and it, it made me not want to fight. Alright, hey guys, it's Paul, Sam, Sean Fagan, the Muay Thai guy here. So we're here with our third interview now. Um, <clears throat> we're here in Thailand on Koh Phangan Island. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think so. I think so, right? <laughs> Koh Phangan. <laughs> I've heard it in ten different times or ten different ways. So uh, we're just gonna get to it. We're just gonna kind of freestyle and have a regular conversation and hopefully you guys get something out of it. So we have Sean, the Muay Thai guy here. Um, if you just want to introduce yourself, who you are, how you got into Muay Thai and all that good stuff. Cool, yeah. Uh, well, I like to say I'm Sean Fagan first and I started Muay Thai essentially when I started playing hockey when I was a kid and I used to always find myself getting into scrums and fights and uh, one day my mom just jokingly said that I should do boxing instead. And uh, she didn't think I would actually take her up on it, so I, I joined a boxing gym, and the rest is pretty much history. Went from boxing to MMA, MMA to Muay Thai. Then uh, after my first trip to Thailand, I just got hooked, and ever since then, it's just been uh, my day-to-day -day life, essentially. Did you ever have any boxing fights when you were doing boxing? I had like, I guess what the equivalent of a smoker would be. Smokers I had, like, with headgear and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, they're pretty low-key stuff, but nothing too intense. It's like three rounds? Yeah, three rounds. It seemed like they go by super quick, but they're fun. How long after starting Muay Thai did you actually take your first trip to Thailand? Uh, not too long. Probably maybe about a year or so, give or take. Uh, when I was training Muay Thai, it was, it was mixed in with MMA and BJJ, so it wasn't a complete focus in Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really like jiu-jitsu or rolling around with big hairy dudes who could like sit on my face and I can't get off. So I, I wanted to really pursue Muay Thai because it was a lot more fun. And uh, when I had the opportunity to come to Thailand, I figured that would really be a good immersing way to really delve into it a little bit farther. How did that pop up? It's weird. It just all just kind of... I'm very lucky. Uh, I'm a good poker player, I like to think, and uh, I won like 15,000 online. Just That's crazy. Uh, playing, <laughs> play, playing with like <laughs> online <laughs> poker. Online poker. This is when like it was allowed online. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then from there, I mean, I didn't know what to do with the money. I paid off some loans, my motorcycle, and that kind of stuff. But I still had a decent chunk of change on the side. Uh, my lease was ending up. I didn't really want to go to back to school. I didn't really know where I wanted to go with my life. I just knew I wanted to, to fight and I wanted to travel. So it kind of made sense that Thailand was one of the top spots to go. Either that or like do Brazil and, or do Jiu Jitsu in Brazil or something similar, a different martial art somewhere else. But uh, Muay Thai definitely stuck out to me. I wanted to get better at that. You came by yourself? You planned came all by. of it by yourself? Yeah, yeah. it was pretty, uh, Pretty stressful, but uh, <laughs> once you get here, it's not too bad. And it's a really enlightening experience traveling by yourself too. You learn a lot about yourself. You did it all on the fly, no? Um, did you, or did you plan most of I, that I out? I planned some of that out, but I also did some of it on the fly too. I kind of, uh, I'm a very practical person, so I like to have some kind of schedule or routine like that I'm going to be following. So I had a general idea of what I wanted to do, and I had like the first month or two planned out. But uh, after like halfway through my trip, I just kind of winged it. But not much changed after that anyway. Now, I know me and Paul actually read your guide on, you know, traveling and yes. coming to Thailand <laughs> and all that stuff. How incredibly hard was it your first time coming here? How long did you stay? Three months. Three months your first time? Mm -hmm. Was it crazy? I mean, was it a lot different than what you even thought it would be? I mean, for us, even after reading your guide, I mean, honestly, we've kind of just been winging it mm -hmm. and just been lucky. You know, was that kind of how it was for you? Yeah, I mean, you read stuff and you watch other people's videos and you, you think you know what to expect and then once you get here, it's a little bit different than what you expected. And initially, you think Thailand as like a, a third world country that you're going to be living in the sticks, like all yeah. this kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah. it's really, it's quite developed and it's a tourist capital of like Southeast Asia. Yeah. Uh, and besides the, the coups and like the government shutdowns and all that kind of stuff, 
uh, it still does really well in the, the tourist industry and the Muay Thai tourism industry is is booming and booming and uh, with more and more gyms coming out it, it allows the, the hardcore person who wants to just sleep on the floor train twice a day only eat twice a day they can do that or someone who just wants to experience Muay Thai for the first time just get a few training sessions under their belt live in like a nice cottage or something on the beach you can do that too so there really is a wide variety of things to do and uh, I chose somewhere in between the two in uh, yeah. Phuket and uh, I think I would continue to do that I'm not, I'm not I like to think I'm a, I'm a good fighter, but I'm not into the hardcore type of training where all I do is eat, sleep, and breathe it, because otherwise I get burnt out and I don't enjoy it, don't get any better. So being near a beach, being in a, like a good environment with other foreigners and everything, it's definitely appealing to me. So when you came a few years ago, do you see a difference like with the tourism and Muay Thai like kind of coming together? Like I know a lot of gyms are kind of drifting towards making more money, so they kind of focus on the tourists a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, do you see a big difference now and then the first time you came here? I just see it building and building and progressively getting bigger and bigger here. Like the first time I came here was about four years ago, and uh, the amount of new gyms that have popped up within these past four years is like doubled in size. So people are noticing that like traveling to Thailand and fighting in Thailand is like a, is an industry in itself. Yeah. And uh, more and more gyms are trying to do that. And then with the, the surplus of fighters and trainers here, they're able to find more jobs uh, doing these kind of just like tourist gyms and whatnot. So, I mean, it's, it's good and it's bad because it kind of waters down some of the training if you don't pick the right gym. But at the same time, it's good because it gives the people who have dedicated their life to the sport We've had like 500, 600 fights. It gives them a job as opposed yeah. to just finish drinking and going out and gambling and that kind of stuff. So it's good in that sense too. Now there's a lot of that here. We're on a party island, I guess you could call it, which I mean, it seems like it, but it doesn't. You see flyers everywhere for parties, but it's not really in your face depending on where you're staying. Now you, like us, kind of keep your nose out of it and kind of do your own thing. Um, do you think it's different for different people? You know, people come here to train, but also to party. Do you think that affects everything? Like changes the whole kind of dynamic of your trip? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what your priorities are. Yeah. And uh, setting up like your itinerary for when you want to come here. It definitely depends on your personality and what you want to get out of your trip. Because like you are traveling to Thailand, you don't, I mean, me personally, I, I want to train Muay Thai and I want to be focused on that. That's like my number yeah. one priority. But I also want to enjoy the country, enjoy different experiences, do some touristy things, and just enjoy the fact that I'm on the opposite side of the world and not just get, not do the exact same shit I'd be doing if I were back home training for a fight, you know? Yeah. And so the, the parties and everything, I'm just not a party guy. And so it, it doesn't really appeal to me at all and doesn't distract me at all. But I know a lot of people, uh, this trip, my past couple trips, where they just got sucked into the, like the nightlife because when you think of, at least when I first came to Thailand, I had no idea the nightlife was as crazy and insane as it is, but uh, it's definitely one of the <laughs> craziest places you'll go to, to party hard and it, this island, they definitely party like almost every single night, but yeah, it, it, for some people, it's what they like, it's a good way to release some stress from training and, and end the week on a um, like a, I guess it's not relaxing, but on a, on a note where they can kind of just let loose and be free. But uh, for me, I'd much rather just get a, a $5 massage, eat some banana pancakes, and sleep in my fan room. Yeah, we were just introduced to Koh San Rodo right when we got here. That was the first place we went. So it's a little we, we definitely yeah. got a taste of like the party party life that's Backpackers, here. Backpackers, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, some people are able to do it, and then they... I don't know how they wake up in the morning and are able to train because I feel like if I'm training twice a day, I need that few hours in between and the hours at night to really recover. If you're energy. really training hard, yeah, that is. I mean, and some people just go through the motions and, and say they like to say they're training in Thailand. Yeah. yeah Meanwhile, yeah. they're just barely even there. They're there physically, but they're not there mentally. You know what I mean? Do you, um, I know the training is obviously different here and then back at home and the trainers here are like more lenient in a way. Like if you want to sit out around, they let you sit out around, but when you, you're in there, they really push you. What do you think like the biggest differences are being here and in the States? Well, one of the main differences is you don't have to hold pads. You don't have to worry about training anyone else. You just got to train yeah. yourself, which yeah. is probably like the number one thing that the biggest difference. 
because all your time is dedicated to your training and, and no one else's. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. So, other than that, though, I mean, there's obviously a little bit of a language barrier uh, between the trainers, but they're able to, whatever they lack in language, they're able to uh, pick up with technique or just explaining it through body mechanics and body motions and repetition and doing it over and over again. And uh, the Thai way of training and, and technique is just that much different, especially back in the States where the sport is still relatively new and not so many people have trained in Thailand or, or just know the traditional Thai way of training. And uh, it's more of like the kickboxing style or just like the karate school kind of style where you have a class, you do a couple techniques, you do a couple rounds in the bag, and, and that's about it. With here, every workout, you're doing bag work, you're doing shadow boxing, you're skipping rope, you're sparring, you're clinching, you, you're doing everything. And so it's just a little bit more immersing. Yeah. And although the the trainers lack the, some some of the trainers like Mon, he speaks great English. He's able to yeah. articulate yeah, what he yeah. wants to say. But a lot of the other trainers who don't speak as good English, usually they're just good because you get to work with them sparring, you get to do pad work with them, but they're not able to break down your technique as much as if someone was able to speak English as well. So I would say that's the main difference. So you fought both here and at home in the States. Mm -hmm. Now training camps in the States are like a pretty set thing. You have four or six weeks depending on you and what you like to do and it's kind of set in stone like your routine, you meet with your trainer, you kind of come up with something that works best for you. Here, not really a training camp. So what are the differences to you? The main difference is like you said, there's no training camp, you're just training. Yeah. And every once in a while they'll be like, you want to fight? And you're like, okay. And then you fight and then you do it all over again. Uh, this is much more of a build up back at the States and uh, you're able to really schedule your training based on your opponent, based on where you're fighting and when you're fighting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, also your diet and everything is much different back in the States too because you actually have to diet and like watch yeah. your weight, yeah, exactly. weight cut. And uh, in bigger stadiums like in Bangkok and everything, you have to do that here. But on most outskirts of Bangkok, you really don't have to worry about your weight at all. You just, they match you up with someone who looks your size and you just fight. Uh, I guess I would say that the, the training camps back in the States are a little bit more intense because it's all leading up to this one big climax. And then here, it's just, it's not a big deal to them. It's just another fight. And so it kind of shifts your mindset to, oh, it's just another fight. No yeah, big deal, true. you know? And so, although I do train hard when I do train here, I do feel like my training goes up another level back in the States because I, I see a light at the end of the tunnel as opposed to just training, training, training. Oh, there might be a fight, might not be a fight. Training, training, training. Oh, there's a fight. And then you just kind of go through that over and over again. So there's good and there's bad with that though because you get a lot of experience. You're always training. You're always in fight shape and, and yeah. whatnot. But uh, it's, it's hard to find a good good balance in between, but it is what it is. Now, I know me and Paul have had it a little different than what we hear you've had as far as preparing for a fight. They've put us through a pretty intense fight camp, I guess you can call it. Is that something you see often, or is that kind of like a new thing? Uh, like with the ties pushing the foreigners? Yeah. Uh, no, they, like most most trainers that I've trained with have pushed me pretty hard, especially when they know I have a fight coming up. But uh, I think I've trained with these guys long enough where they kind of know that I like to do my own thing and uh, I know how to push myself and I know what my body needs and what it doesn't need as opposed to you guys have only been here for about a month and they they want you to represent the gym so they want to push you as hard as possible so that they feel like you're ready stepping into the ring. It's good and it's bad because they do kill you and uh, it does give you mental toughness knowing that you can push past like complete fatigue and and being extremely exhausted, but uh, I mean, I don't know where I'm going with this, but essentially the training camp and everything, it, it's good that they're able to push foreigners, but at the same time, I think they, they're a little sadistic when it comes down to it. And uh, they don't understand the idea that we haven't been training since we were six years old, twice a day, yeah. 10 hours a day. And we're looking more and more into like the whole overtraining even even in the states, people look at it and how it's kind of like it's a good thing, but it could be a bad thing a week out. How how much are you really getting mm -hmm. from you know doing sprints and really really hard like work and overtraining yourself the week of your fight? Mm -hmm. 
where like it's the benefit versus risk ratio when yeah. it comes to the fight. And a lot of people are like, oh, there's no such thing as overtraining. Fuck those people. They don't know what the <laughs> hell they're talking about. <laughs> they're like, oh, I train this much during the day and every single day of my life. And like, they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. And, and people who are able to come to Thailand and train twice a day with the highs, like more power to them. If they can do it, then, then fucking do yeah. it. But there does come a time of where it's just a detriment, at least for me. And it's just about knowing who you are, how you react to your training, how your body and your mind does. Yeah. And like you have to know when to push yourself, but you also also know when to put on the brakes and take a step back. And uh, that, it's a constant learning process, and you just have to make a, a shit ton of mistakes before you actually learn how hard to push yourself or how easy to go. Yeah, that kind of goes into the whole quality and quantity uh, thing, and I know you're really for quality training versus quantity of training. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, because especially in Thailand, a lot of people come here being like, oh, I'm gonna train twice a day, six times a week, and and do it hardcore. <laughs> and like, you, you come here, and that, that's really hard to do. The, the Thais are born into it. They, they started when they were six or seven years old. They're able to do it because it's their job, that's how they were born, and that's how they were raised. Where us Farang, we start when we were like 15, 16, 17, even older. Yeah. And our bodies aren't used to that kind of uh, in, intense training day in and day out. And although, some, like I said, some people can handle it and they enjoy it and they benefit from it, uh, people like myself, I'm much more, I get a lot more from my training if I do one session a day, three hours of just complete focus and intense training. Yeah. Uh, if I train twice a day for like six to seven hours, I end up just going through the motions. I don't want to be there. Uh, I'm not really learning anything. If anything, my technique is, is going to shit because I don't really care about training. Definitely. Uh, don't get me wrong. Every once in a while, I train twice a day uh, when I'm yeah. feeling good and enough for it. Uh, but more often than not, I try to listen to my body and my mind as much as I can and uh, just go with the flow and, and see how hard I can push myself, when I can push myself. And uh, guys like Joseph Altalini, who's the glory welterweight champion, yeah. he trains kickboxing like four times a week. Yeah. And then he does <laughs> like strength Lift conditioning twice. twice a week. Yeah. And like, if there's no, that that's proof right there that quality is more important than quality. Not saying that quantity isn't important because you do need to put in your 10,000 hours or whatever it is. Right. But uh, you, you need focused, intense work. You don't need just going through the motions and just punching the bag just to punch the bag and go for a run just to go for a run. You, yeah. you need to be there mentally in order to really benefit from it. Yeah, it's definitely good to have a plan and just kind of strategically put together your camp. I mean, I know he's a really smart guy. He's a teacher himself, and they really base everything on science. Yeah, they break so, it like, down. A mix of that and then just what works, which Muay Thai in Thailand works. A mix of the two is definitely a good thing to have. Yeah, it's, it depends on your philosophy, like what you want to do with your training. And uh, for me, I love Muay Thai. I love kickboxing. But I don't want it to completely immerse in my life. I don't want it to be my entire life where I wake up, I train, I go to sleep, I eat, I train. I do that every single day. I'm, I get burned out from it. I, I need some kind of balance. If I'm not integrating weightlifting or yoga, mm -hmm. taking yeah. days off just to read, watching TV, do stupid shit, you know, uh, then I don't get any benefit from my training. Uh, I mean, I do get benefit from my training when I do have those yeah. times off. Whereas supposed to, I'm just training all the time. I just resent it and I don't enjoy it. And in the, in the why I started it is because I, I love doing it. It's fun. Right. And when, once it becomes not fun, then I realize that I'm just doing too much of it. Okay, so I know you're here in Thailand and you're going to be leaving here the next couple of weeks. What's your end all plan after all this? And then also like in the future, are you planning on opening up your own gym? And are you planning to go pro soon? Uh, my end all plan, I'll start with that, is just to be happy and to live a simple life. I don't need anything too crazy. I know it's really corny and cliche, <laughs> but it really is. I, I love to travel. Sure. I want to travel the world more. I want to have the freedom and flexibility to be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, w with the website, one of the reasons I started that is so I can hopefully have that freedom and flexibility to do what I want when I want. Uh, we had a conversation about how I hate working for anyone, even if they're the best bosses in the world, because in the end, it's it's their bottom line. Yeah. I like to work from myself, which in turn is difficult because you, you have to make your own homework assignments, hold yourself accountable to those assignments, and, yeah. and do them. 
uh, which can be really difficult at times, but it, it pays off in the end because I'm here in Thailand just doing whatever I want. So Great. it's good in that sense. Uh, in terms of turning pro, I definitely will be turning pro soon. I don't, I don't know whether I'll, I'll do one more amateur fight when I get back to the States to, to do the weight cut again, just to make sure I can get down to like 142 because I haven't made that cut for a while. Uh, if I feel like I'm ready, if I can make that weight, I don't even know how much I weigh right now because it's Thailand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cares, you know? <laughs> We're going to convert the kilograms yeah. right now. Yeah, no way. It takes too much work. But uh, I'll eventually be turning pro, ideally by the end of the year, if not the beginning of next year. And uh, awesome. just fight and see where it takes me. And uh, in terms of opening up a gym, I definitely do. And uh, it'll definitely be uh, a future goal. But right now, I kind of want to focus on my training, my fight career, and uh, my website, and just my life in general. Because if I if I am trying to balance too many things at once, I, I not put enough focus in one or put more focus on one rather than the other, they'll both suffer. So I, I want to make sure that I'm not putting too much on my plate, otherwise it's just going to be detrimental to what my yeah. end goals one, are. One is selfless and one is selfish. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. So That's why, I mean, you got to find balance. And I mean, although I, I try to make a little bit of money from my website and people give me shit for that, if I wasn't able to to do that, I wouldn't be able to continue providing content or doing interviews and right. I, I'm so thankful for all the support like you guys read my book and like all that kind of shit <laughs> and it's it's awesome and I'm, I'm glad and like I see people come to the gym I'm like oh my god Sean like, <laughs> yeah. it's so crazy I'm like oh my god this person knows me <laughs> from like online it's so That's weird how the cool. internet can like do that you know it's like any other business you're providing something to someone and then you know they give you something in return and that's the only way you can keep going with it exactly and uh i think i'm doing a, a decent job at giving a lot of useful content to people to help with their training with the mindset sure. and everything and uh as long as i'm doing it in an ethical way i don't see anything wrong with it as long as i'm not trying to like steal anyone's money and shit and uh it's been awesome being able to like like meet up with people who uh, know me through the website or mm -hmm. interview like top fighters like Kevin Ross, John Wayne Parr, and that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. It's been really, really unreal, especially since it just started as like a, a training journal, you know? But anything's possible if you just work hard, stay focused, and stay consistent. That's probably the most important thing. It gives thing. other people motivation because once you listen to, if you guys listen to his podcast, the these fighters, they're just like you. They're just like regular people. and. They're very humble, and that's awesome that you you were able to have Kevin Ross as one of your yeah, first interviews. Crazy. We were able to have Kevin Ross as one of our first interviews. So, how did the whole Muay Thai guy brand start? Where'd you come up with the name? Uh, I, I came up with a name because I saw someone use it in like a form or something. I was like, oh, that's kind of catchy. And then uh, <laughs> simple, yeah, yeah, simple, easy, gets to the point. And uh, I, when my first trip to Thailand, I kind of wanted to keep like my family and my friends updated with my training. Yep. And so that's what I did. And then uh, more and more people kept finding my website because I, I tried to get it out there mm -hmm. just to see what it would bring. And I just kept building and building and building. And uh, it's come what it is today. And it's been a little overwhelming at, at points. And uh, just dealing with a lot of uh, like haters every now and then. Once you reach to a certain point, you, you yeah. get a lot of people just coming at you for like no good reason. Yeah. But uh, it's, the amount of people I've helped along the way has far outweighed the amount of people who like of to course, troll on the yeah. internet. So I'm not too worried about it. And I, it's a learning process in that sense too, just being able to deal with the people who are trying to put you down. But if you can use them as, motiva uh, as motivation, which I know you're good at, like when people doubt you and like put you down, you just have to use that as fuel to the fire mm -hmm. to uh, add to your intensity during training and focus during life. Okay. And, it, it definitely, I've tried to be, turn that around as much as I can, so that's what I got to say about that. So, I'm a big believer that behind every great man is a great woman. Now you have a fantastic girlfriend, Liz. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how she plays a role in kind of everything that you're doing. Well, if you guys know how bad cutting weight is. Absolutely. And <laughs> it's essentially my time of the month for the entire month <laughs> when I'm cutting weight. And, and she has to deal with me. And like, I, I try to be as... Only fair as not dickish as possible but I end up being an asshole uh, for most of the time and she's able to deal with it. Uh, she helps me, she's, my, she's been my backbone, she's been to all my fights, it's most of my fights, the ones that she can actually make mm -hmm. when I'm not in like, Thailand and shit. Yeah. But uh, ever since I've been dating her I've 
I haven't really lost. I've only my only losses have been in the WKAs, and uh, it's hard to even consider them losses because they're so whack. But, yeah, but the tournaments are either crazy. way, like <laughs> sh she's been there through thick and thin. Uh, when I had my broken arm, she was a, a huge uh, factor in just me staying positive and, and not wanting to like kill myself for not training and not doing anything. Yeah. And uh, just dealing with all my injuries, my ups and downs. Uh, dating a fighter is, is tough. Being a fighter is tough, but I think dating a fighter might be a little bit tougher because it's, if you're not a fighter, it's a little bit different for you because you both know what We're it is to, to fight. Yeah. But it's a whole different uh, world for her that she, she has yeah. to like adapt to. Yeah, definitely. And uh, she's done a great job, and I don't think I would have made it as far as I have without her. That's awesome. Though. She can be understanding without being in your shoes. Like she literally is my in my shoes. She's done the same exact things, the water cut, everything like that. So, I mean, it's easier that way. I mean, it's hard either way, but for her to understand that. Yeah, she's been a major positive influence, and uh, we do yoga together and we work out together. Uh, I train her a little bit. That's awesome. And so it's a mutual. It's mutually beneficial. Where we're both making each other better people, and I think that's key part of any relationship Absolutely. is that you're bringing each other up as opposed to putting each other down. So. How hard is it when you travel far, like here in Thailand and she's not with you? And it's extremely difficult. Yeah. Uh, the, my second trip to Thailand uh, is when we like first started dating and I didn't think much of it. Like, I'm going to go to Thailand for like three months and <laughs> it'll be, it'll That's fly by. Time, right? yeah. yeah. But uh, it was really hard. I was, I was depressed. I was it, it was a combination of things, but definitely one of the main factors was just being away from her. Uh, and there was other stuff going on with my family and everything that was kind of making my mind go back to home, to home as mm -hmm. opposed to in my training and everything back in uh, Thailand. So yeah, it was extremely difficult. You, you get you feel lonely when you actually have someone to like care about. Whereas the first time I came to Thailand, I didn't have anyone. So yeah. all I had to do was focus on myself, and which right. was really easy. But meanwhile, I'm just worried about her and worried about other. So what'd you do the to family? battle that? Shit, I didn't do much. Cry in my room, <laughs> and sulk in my room. No, but uh, just try to get as much training as I, like just keep myself busy as much as possible. Yeah. And uh, I, I was a little uh, wallowing in self-pity. Oh, poor me, like my girlfriend's so far away. I'm in paradise in Thailand. And, <laughs> but I mean, I grew from it, I learned from it. And although, I, I hate to admit that I was such a little bitch during my second trip. It's made me a better person, and yeah. it is what it is. And if you if you don't learn from your failures, if you don't make any mistakes, you're not going to grow as a person. So Definitely. this is about taking a stride and learning from it. Well, it's great. I mean, she's here this trip. Uh, you guys have been out here for quite some time now, kind of traveling all around Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, how thankful are you to kind of have her here with you this time? It's been awesome to share the experience with someone because yeah. like the first couple times it's just me. I'm just here. I get to take pictures and send them home and stuff, but yeah. actually having someone there to like experience the same things you're experiencing. Because yeah. you'll go back home, you'll talk about Thailand to all your friends, but it's not going to be the same as knowing the actual experiences that you guys had while you're here. Because you'll talk about like the crazy ass lizards or the dogs <laughs> here. <laughs> Like all that kind of that stuff. That fucker's still there. Yeah. He is. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He just can't Same spot. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you guys will know what it's like to be here. Whereas opposed to telling your friends and family about your trip and everything, there will be a little bit of a disconnect. But yeah. the fact that you're able to share the, the experiences, the fact that you fight on the same card and everything, <laughs> yeah. it's awesome. It's really awesome, man. All we've had some, we have had ups and downs during this trip. I mean, we've traveled all throughout Thailand. Right. It's been unreal but like if I was doing that by myself I would be so much more stressed I would be so much more lost in like what I was doing like why I was doing it but ha by having her there by my side doing the same things I'm doing it really helped just keep me focused keep me motivated keep me happy and so I'm very thankful for that great that's awesome so I think it's good to close out with some personal stuff um, any shout outs you want to give um, your website stuff like that yeah sure you want to uh, tell everyone uh, Shout out to all my fans and followers who are able to support me and make this happen. Uh, allow me to train and train in Thailand and do all the things that want, uh, make me a better fighter, a better person. Uh, thanks to my family, my mom and my dad have been a, my major supporters throughout this whole time. Oh, my mom kind of cringes at the fact that I fight and everything. She, <laughs> she still supports me. 
uh, my dad, he's, he's beside him and Liz are battling for my number one fan position. He's always <laughs> he's always taking photos and videos of my fights and always sending me new stuff about Muay I take that spot. <laughs> <laughs> You got well. I would say you have to fight for Triple it, but you're probably yeah. tables, ladders, well. and chairs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, other than that, yeah, family, girlfriend, fans. That's about it. And you guys for allowing me to do this interview. Thank you. Awesome. So what is it? Moy dash Thai dash guy dot yeah, com. Yeah, the Thai guy dot com was not available, so I had to put the <laughs> fucking How is that dashes. Possible? I had to put the dashes in between. And I've tried to get that domain name for the longest time, and the guy who owns it just is like out of contact. But he keeps renewing <laughs> the fucking domain name. Automatic payments, and it's man. Like, uh, Killer. It's so annoying, but you can find just Google Muay Thai guy, you'll be able to find it. That's right. All right, awesome. So closing out here in Thailand. Thank you guys. Bye guys.